Welcome everyone to Gamer Mail. Today, has Nvidia just forgotten? Intel's ARC GPUs are getting this. Nvidia is releasing the largest GPU ever, and millions of GPUs are coming. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, if you've been following the channel, to which you definitely should to keep up with all things gaming hardware. Anyway, if you have, you know that Nvidia announced their RTX 3090 Ti back at CES, and while we didn't get much information, Nvidia's Jeff Fisher stated this. Tune in later this month for more details. Well, it's the final day of the month, and as Video Cards points out, 6 a.m. PST is typically when Nvidia's embargo ends, yet we haven't heard anything. Anything. Did Nvidia just forget or what? I mean, we have been hearing that it's been delayed, but they could at least give us the official specs or something. Of course, we've mostly known the likely specs based on leaks for quite a while, but getting the official word would be nice. I would think that it's because they don't have enough to stock shelves, but as we've seen over the last year, that definitely hasn't stopped them before. Video Cards reports that reviewers are still waiting for samples, so I don't know. Clearly something's going on, it would just be nice to see Nvidia address it. But first, today's the last day to save money on your PC build at Newegg's 21st Anniversary Sales Event, and they've got some really great deals. I'm talking up to 30% off Intel CPUs, up to 50% off PSUs, some great deals on laptops for those who can't find a GPU and don't mind mobile gaming, and lots of other deals. But today's the last day, so make sure to check that out with the affiliate link in the description below. It doesn't cost you a penny more, but it helps the channel out. Next up, AMD first launched resizable bar support with their Smart Access Memory Tech back in 2020, along with their RX 6000 cards, and it basically allowed the CPU to access more of the GPU's memory. It was originally billed as essentially something AMD could do because they made both the CPU and GPU, but shortly after the announcement, Nvidia claimed that they could do the same thing, to which they subsequently did. Well, it looks like they won't be the only ones, as a recent story from Foronix shows that the new Linux drive for Intel's ARC GPUs mentions resizable bar support. According to the patch note, it says, quote, Starting from DG2, we will have resizable bar support for device local memory. Basically, Intel is set to add the tech with their Alchemist GPUs. Of course, we'll have to see how it compares to AMD and Nvidia, but it's exciting to see that Intel's cards are getting a ton of the new tech right at the beginning. Next up for today, Nvidia is about to release a massive GPU. Literally. Okay, maybe not that big, but they're set to release the biggest GPU of all time. In a new tweet from resident leaker Copite7Kimmy, and more or less confirmed by known leaker Graymon55, Nvidia's upcoming GH100 is set to tip the scales when it comes to being a huge GPU. According to Copite7Kimmy, the GH100 is set to be just under a thousand millimeters squared. Later he says that it's closer to 900 millimeters squared, but still. For reference, the current largest GPU under production is the GA100 coming in at 826 millimeters squared. Now you're probably thinking that's just because it's an MCM GPU, but get this, it's not. According to Graymon55, this is a monolithic die. Remember that one reason GPUs are likely going towards an MCM design is because it heavily cuts down on costs. See, the bigger a chip gets, the higher chance something goes wrong during production, and you have to effectively throw it out or bin it, meaning yield rates go down. In an MCM design, chips are made from smaller modules, so if one has to be thrown away, it's not a huge price. With monolithic, eventually the dies get so big and the yield rates get so low that it's just not economically feasible. But apparently, Nvidia's upcoming high-end Hopper GPU is still monolithic, which sort of goes against a lot of the rumors up to this point. With that said, according to Graymon55, Hopper will still use an MCM design, but it just won't be on this part. And that's actually a bit concerning if true, because it would mean Nvidia may be having a hard time getting it to scale properly. Either way, the GH100 is set to be the biggest GPU ever, by quite a bit. And lastly for today, while I know it seems like every other day there's some story promising the end to the GPU shortage, all the while it's continued on for over a year now, but this story brings me some real hope. In a recent article by PC Gamer, they wrote an open letter to Intel with the title, quote, An open letter to Intel. Help, you're our only way out of the GPU crisis. 
It's basically a letter to Intel's new CEO, Pat Gelsinger, asking for help out of the absurd world we've been living in. Well, Intel's own Raja Kaduri actually replied to the piece on Twitter, where he said that Intel Graphics is working hard to get, quote, millions of ARC GPUs in the hands of PC gamers every year, meaning we can expect a pretty massive number of GPUs, hopefully when they launch. Not only that, but Pat Gelsinger himself responded with, quote, I am with you too, PC gamer. We are on it. Now, while that is exciting, there are a couple roadblocks. For one, Intel's Arc Alchemist GPUs are said to be based on TSMC's 6 nanometer process, which means Intel isn't making these off their own nodes. But what some people don't think about is that while yes, that means they're competing with other companies, AMD and Nvidia aren't just going to roll over if they can't get the right node. They'll find a way to produce the chips they need. Meaning Intel using TSMC doesn't necessarily mean that they're taking chips from others and it all just evens out. Plus, AMD's next-gen parts are likely using TSMC's 5 nanometers. That and TSMC would simply work to produce more. Of course, the second issue is with it being a chip shortage, it's tough to do that. But the market is working to correct it, and Intel definitely has big resources to make things happen. Plus, with them being in the game, it means more competition to help bring prices down while spurring innovation. Lastly, Intel would have to produce many millions of chips to fully catch up to demand, but simply put, this would be a great help. Then again, we've been disappointed before. Time, as always, will tell. So while that does it for today, do you have hope from Intel? And what about that massive GPU from Nvidia? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.